Hey, I'm Jared, and this is how I made my latest demonic Pokemon rendition of Dragonite. You may know I made a video a couple months ago showing my texturing process for how I made a demonic version of Paris. That was the first video I actually planned out for this channel, but at the time I didn't record any of the sculpting process. So when I finished that piece, I knew I wanted to do another rendition of Stephen Oakley's demonic Pokemon, but this time I wanted to show the full process, so that's what we're going to take a look at today. Also, if you haven't checked out Oakley's work, I'll go ahead and leave a comment down below and you can see some of the other awesome Pokemon that he's made, as well as some of his other professional work for things like Evolve or God of War. Right here you can see what we started with. This was the original concept the design was based off of. With the last Pokemon, I really wanted to emphasize the painterly filling to the models and make the final renders feel as though they may or may not be 3D. So that's where I wanted to continue to take this piece as well. I just want to continue to refine the look and style a little bit more and hopefully push the quality bar as well. So the first thing I started with was the initial block out. For these characters, obviously I didn't really have a base mesh to start things off with, so we're just going to start things from scratch. For this project, I used just a basic sphere and dynamesh to start pushing and pulling things out to get something that resembles the silhouette of the concept. For this piece, I didn't have any intent to sculpt the model asymmetrically, so I kept the model unposed till the end just to save myself a little bit of time on the sculpting front of things. This stage of the block out was just a lot of refinement for me to get the chunky feel that the concept had. I also really wanted to balance out the overall proportions of the model at this point just to make sure that things were starting to feel correct. With a piece like this, there really wasn't a way to match the proportions to something that exists in reality, so to get things to match up, I was constantly switching back and forth with the concept over the model just to make sure I was getting things to line up like the head size and the arm size and just the location of the body parts in relation to each other. Once I was able to get the base to a semi-decent spot, I started to work more on defining the shapes and forms. I wanted the model to have kind of a chunky feel, but also there was this underlying muscle structure that you could see. So at this point, I had gotten a lot of the primary shapes involved, so I was able to start chiseling in some of the musculature into the secondary forms. While addressing the secondary forms on each part of Dragonite, I was attacking each part of the body on its own. While doing this, I was also starting to refine the silhouette just a little bit further, making sure that I was capturing a lot of the volumes that this Dragonite concept had. As I start to refine each section of the body just a little bit more, I'm able to get a bigger picture of the character and really start to bring it a little bit closer to the final concept. Now after I was able to go through and refine all of my secondary forms, I also like to start to put in some gestural lines that are going to start to help inform uh, some of the final details that I'm going to add in in the final pass. When sculpting my forms, the brush that I like to use is the clay spin brush. This brush leaves a lot of information after each individual stroke, so this provides some directionality and flow for me once I wanted to start to do the wrinkling. It gave me an idea of where they're going to originate from and where they're going to flow to. With all of my secondary forms in, I start to move into a final tertiary detail form pass. This pass doesn't have a lot of information, mostly because of the nature of the render and what the final product's going to look like, but I just wanted to add a little bit of tooth to areas like the chest, as well as some of the wrinkles and carving in just a little bit of uh, form and features in the face area. The primary area for this treatment was the chest area. I kept the sculpting rather simple by just laying down a couple of clay tube strokes so that I got some directionality to the flow of the scales, and then I would go over the edges with the damp standard or the standard brush and just pull out some of the edges to accentuate as if there was kind of a chipping effect. One of the major things that was rather difficult about this piece was trying to find a good balance of forms. So to help reinforce the fact that although he is a cute looking dragon, I wanted to remind people that he still is a dragon. So when I got to the face, I started to introduce a little bit more complexity as well as some harsher shapes to the face. This I thought really gave him a lot more personality to his character. At first he felt a little bit too soft, but as I started to chisel away some of the forms, this really started to pull him a little bit more towards the intimidating side of what I wanted. 
With this piece, I did know I was going to need a pose, but this was something I knew I could worry a little bit more about later in the process. The reason for this was because I wanted to texture him symmetrically just to help save a little bit of time. So once I had textures rolling, I knew I could come back and worry about the pose after that point. Now let's move on to the texturing. So like I said earlier, this was the second Pokemon that I had done in this style. And luckily I had actually recorded the last process because texturing this guy, I had a lot of points where I felt like I was really fighting the process to get it to look like I had before. But after a lot of banging on the textures, I was able to get things to line up and ultimately come together, which was nice. To speed things up, I went ahead and exported out a smart material off of the Paris project that I had done before to get a starting point. This just gave me a couple of layers to get a little bit of a groundwork to get myself running. Now this is where the characters really going to start to come together is going to be this hand painted layer. Let me preface this section with the fact that I by no means am a hand painted style type of artist, but it is something that I do really enjoy. It's always a challenge for me and it gets me outside of my comfort zone, but that's part of why I enjoy it so much. But it's also why I have a hard time getting the paint and colors to feel the way that I want all the time. So one of the really cool facts about this concept that Oakley had done is there's this contrast of the idea of Pokemon, these cute cuddly creatures, met with the violent reality of them actually being scary and real animals. So that was something that I had to take into consideration with Dragonite as well. He did have this feature of blood on his hands and feet. I originally wasn't sure how I wanted to tackle this material. I kind of wanted to venture out a little bit and maybe try something more realistic, something a little bit more uh, nuanced, but I ended up going with the more graphic shape to the blood. For this layer, I spend most of my time painting in colors to match closer to the concept. The base layers that I laid out, they gave me a good idea of where some of the gradients are going to be, and with this hand painted layer, I just can go in and refine those a little bit further on areas like the hands where the blood's going to be moving up the arm, or the wings where it's going to be transitioning from blue to orange. I also start to lay in where the light's going to be hitting the model and where it's going to be coming from. This layer, I'm constantly thinking about the light and values and how those are just going to start to work together in the final render. So after enough time in this layer and just kind of banging on things, I really was able to start to get into a groove. The textures started to come together and it was feeling the way that I wanted to. After knocking out my hand painted layer, I added a few separate layers on top that threw in some color to the AO as well as some curvature on top of the model to accentuate some of the forms. These layers are where the textures really started to come together and kind of get things buttoned up as a whole. At this point I was pretty happy with how the textures were starting to come together, so I moved forward with the pose. To get the pose, I used Transpose Master inside ZBrush, and to do this I just mask off individual parts of the body and just slowly move the model until I get a pose that I'm happy with. The strength about Transpose Master is I'm able to get an overall idea of the pose, but also go in and refine the sculpt a little bit just if anything breaks or if I'm stretching any of the model to a point where the forms start to collapse. After getting the pose finished, next I'm going to move into the rendering, and this is where I was really able to bring the whole piece together. Again, like before, to save myself a little bit of time, I used the same scene for my Paris project as a starting point, so I had some of the materials and lighting already in place to just kind of give me a good point to kick off from. When doing the rendering for Dragonite, I knew I wanted to make a couple of changes to what the final render looked like versus the Paris one that I had done before. First, I decided I wanted to ditch the black outline. It was an alright addition to the first one, but I didn't really feel like it was helping much to the final presentation, so I decided to remove it. When making the final renders of this character, I really liked the idea of the ethereal nature of the concept and Dragonite's wings in the design, so I started to play a little bit with the shaders and subsurface scattering until I was able to get this cool glow effect in the blue areas of the wings. I was able to localize it with just the use of a mask, and between the glow of the wings and the pop of the lighting, everything started to come together, and I was just overall pretty proud of how the final result came out. 
The other major change that I decided to do was drop the white background. In the original, I kept it white because it kind of adhered to what the concept was doing as being something that was drawn on paper. But with this one, I decided to go with a much darker background. Overall, I think that this was a good call because of how much it made the character pop off of the page. The last tweak that I added to this scene was actually just playing with the lights. I threw in a rim light with some fog to create this halo effect around the head. I just wanted to further move the attention up to the head as that was where the focus was going to be and this was just an easy color contrast way to pull the viewer's eye by mixing that blue and orange. Overall, this was a really fun piece to make. It was another great addition to the line of demonic Pokemon to my catalog that I wanted to knock out in the future. Now here are some of the final renders of everything put together. With that, hopefully you guys found this video interesting. If there are any Pokemon you've seen Oakley make that you want to see me tackle next, throw that down in the comment section. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to see what future content I make next. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.